What's up y'all? Today we're talking about understanding more of your League of Legends games and understanding your, your losses and taking extreme ownership of our league climb. So over in the JS Academy, uh, it's a coaching platform if you guys have never heard of it before. And we just started a book club. And the first book we read was Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink, this big beast of a man right here. Now, Extreme Ownership is actually a leadership book uh, Jocko is a ex Navy SEAL, a retired Navy SEAL in the military who learned a lot of kind of leadership lessons through leading Navy SEAL teams, right? Some of the highest level SEAL like military units in the world, right? And he talks about a high level military unit team being very similar to a high level sports team or a very competitive business team, right? So League, there was a lot of parallels we drew in League, and I want to talk about the biggest things we took away. Now, if you guys are interested in reading this book, I actually just got accepted into being an Amazon affiliate. So if you would like to pick up your own copy, I'm going to have an Amazon affiliate link in the description. So feel free to check that out. I get a kickback if you decide to buy from Amazon through that link. Um, but let's get into it. I want to start by expressing this idea by telling a story of two junglers that I played with. Now... These pictures, they're just pictures to show the emotions. Obviously, both these players are amazing players. But these two junglers are people that I played on teams with. Both were super solid players, right? These are high elo teams. Um, they were either diamond or masters. Uh, both had very good awareness. They, they saw everything, right? You know how really good junglers are. They kind of see the whole map. They tell people where they're going to go and whatnot. And when something bad would happen, let's say our top lane died to a gank. One of the junglers would say, Oh! How could you die to the gank top lane? Like literally, you're as blind as a bat. I can't believe it. That gank is so obvious. And the other one would say, as the gank is happening, hey, the enemy jungler is on their crux. Top, you are in danger. I am moving away towards bottom. I can't be on the map for 30 seconds. And sometimes the top would die in both of those cases. But who do you think, first of all, had happier teammates, right? And second of all, ended up performing better in the world of uh, amateur competitive in the world of solo queue who do you think got further um and obviously it's the person it's the second one right it's the mo more positive one and the question is why and this book really showed me that that first jungler was opting out of responsibility rather than working on, on and focusing on what he could control he focused on kind of what he couldn't control. He said, hey, top lane, you died. And he didn't realize that we actually have more control than we think we do. If you knew where the jungle was going to be, you should have said something, right? If it's obvious to you, it's probably not obvious to us because we're doing something else. Or if it is obvious to you, be a good teammate, be a good leader and communicate it, right? And even when you do communicate it, if they still die, be ready to play around that. Right? If the enemy jungle is showing top, he's leaving something else open somewhere else. Whether it's dragon, whether it's a bot gank, whether it's a mid gank, whether it's a bot side invade. Right? So be prepared for that very realistic outcome and react to it properly rather than flaming and staying in your own head. That story really showed me what extreme ownership is all about. It's about understanding we have more control than we think we do. The more you point at other things... And you say, this is the reason I can't climb. Top lane dying is bad. My bot was 0 and 12. It's all a waste of resources. And it's a weak mindset that illustrates kind of, it, it, it's a very victim mentality, right? Extreme ownership is a very good way to combat this victim mentality, especially in the League of Legends scene. So let's talk about kind of how we can do this a little bit. And the first thing that I really, the most important thing I took out, of, out from this book was how to take responsibility for the feedback the game offers. If something bad happens to you, that's the game telling you that you did something incorrectly or that you missed something, right? And it's your job to understand why and how you can impact it, right? That's extreme ownership. If you die in the game, something bad happened. What happened, right? If you lose a fight, you were missing something. Why did you take the fight? Were you missing information? Are your hands not good enough, right? If you're a mid laner and your top lane dies, what are you doing to play off of that pressure, right? Let's say your top dies to the jungle. Are you playing on the bot side to trade sides of the map? 
Are you using that jungle information to track where the jungle is going to be later so you don't die to that gank? Are you communicating to your team how they can play off that impact? You don't call a jungle cap with the jungle ganking top and your top dying. You play around it, right? That's what an extreme ownership is all about. So here you can see in this picture, this is actually from one of my games. And here the Sejuani is ganking me and I'm actually getting killed here. And in this situation, the victim mentality would die and say, oh, it's a jungle gap, right? I have all this prio and I'm ahead and I get ganked and I die for it. And why is my jungle not doing anything? Why is my jungle not even done with his full clear yet? It's 3.30. It's a jungle gap. But what extreme ownership tells us is why am I so far up here, right? We know that Sejuani is going to finish her full clear soon, even if our jungle is not. We know we have to be getting ganked here. We have good vision on our top side. So why are we not leaning harder on the top side? Why am I not in this pocket or this pocket where I could get out and live, right? Why is my flash down? So I can't flash out of here and live. This situation is 1000% on me, the rise, even though I want to say it's a jungle gap, right? Our brains want to cope us. Our brains want to give away the responsibility. But once we really acknowledge that the game is our fault, and that we are not perfect, we could really adapt and learn the most from that, right? If we lose, did we play perfect, right? Because we're all gonna lose. Even if you have extreme ownership, you're still gonna lose. But extreme ownership challenges you. And it says, what did you learn from the loss? That's the difference. So if you come out of this and you die and you say it's a jungle gap, and I come out of this and I die and I say, well, I need to learn how to play better. Because I, you know, all these things, why is my flash down? Why is, why is the wave here? Why am I not leaning harder? Over time, the person who takes extreme ownership of the bad things that happen is going to under have a much deeper understanding of reality and a much deeper understanding of how to actively impact the game, right? Our brains are very good at coping us uh, and our brains are very good at making us think we don't have control over things we do. So extreme ownership's entire premise is we have more control than we think we do. And it's a very good lesson in lead because people always wanna blame losses on other people. Okay, so the next part about this video is Extreme Ownership is a leadership book, right? So in league, we can also take leadership roles, right? Now, by being a good leader, you can make sure that your team kind of follows suit and you could practice some of these very important skills. So, one of the biggest things we talked about in the Academy Book Club is how can we be a leader in League of Legends? Now, the first thing that we talked about is first and foremost, we are leaders of ourselves, right? It is your job to do your job, right? So if you want to lead effectively, you have to be an effective player, right? So let's say that you're trying to climb. If you're losing lane, you don't really get to be a good leader right? You have to set a good example. You have to lead yourself correctly first. Somebody in the discussion mentioned, you should have, you should be quiet so your team can trust you, right? If you're dying all the time and you're being really loud and obnoxious uh, and, and your teammates are hearing an ally has been slain, you're being really hard to deal with. So be like, do your job, be trustworthy and be steady, be consistent, be strong. That's the first part of being a leader. Now past that, we can actually opt in to more leadership, right? Let's say uh, effective communication. That's a video I'm releasing this week. It may be out already. It may be out in a couple of days. Check the channel for it. Um, we can opt into more leadership through effective communication, right? If you ping more, that's an example of opting into more leadership roles, right? If you're pinging the macro calls and you're saying, go here and be here, that's opting into leadership. If you're, um, communicating basic macro concepts in chat. Hey, Baron is up. If you're putting timers in chat, right? You're picking somebody's flash and then you're actually timing it out and you're putting the timer in chat. Those are all examples of opting into more leadership things. And the more things you decide to opt into, the more responsibility you have, the more extreme ownership you can take, the further you can climb. So extreme ownership is a very beautiful book. Um, I really enjoyed reading this and it has a lot of parallels to League. So definitely check it out. Again, there'll be a link for that below. And I wanna wrap up by saying we all have painful experiences. This is actually a screenshot from my account yesterday where I just went lost, 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 lost. 
I just didn't play good in pretty much any of these. But extreme ownership is really taking responsibility for these losses and saying that I should have performed better and I could have performed better in every single one of them. Even this one, I went 4-3-11. and 11. I played pretty good in that one. Um, I did the most damage on my team. I did second most damage in the game. I played the fights pretty well. I had a pretty good KD. I didn't die that much. Um, but even with playing pretty good in a Masters Diamond on average game, I still had lots to improve on, right? And that's what it's all about. These painful experiences, these losing experiences plus reflection equal progress. It is our responsibility to take extreme ownership for what happens and to take extreme ownership for our account and our climb and our journey, right? Everybody has bad days. Everybody has bad games. But if you take extreme ownership, you can have a good climb. You can have a good journey, right? And that's what it's all about. I hope you guys appreciated this kind of video. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. If you made it to the end, type 11 minutes or whatever it ends up being. I hope I see you guys in the next one. Make sure you guys subscribe and click that bell. Peace.